Good morning, children. Today we are studying about federalism. Class 10th social science we are studying today that is about the federalism. I hope that you are feeling better. So we are going to study about the federalism. Federalism, what is first of all try to understand what is the meaning of the word federalism. Once again, federalism is a system of government in which the power is divided between a central authority and various constituent, constituent units of the country. It means that in a federal form of government, power is not concentrating on a on one hand. It will be distributed by uh, several uh, levels. Several levels. Once again, I will discuss federalism is a system of government in which the power is divided. If more about this, power is divided. Power is not concentrating by a person. But if the power is divided, once again, the federalism is a system of government in which power is shared. Divided here means power is shared. Divided between the central authority. Central authority and various constituent units of the country. You know that in India, there are central government is there, state government is there, then the local government is there that we will discuss in my class. First of all, try to understand about the federalism. Federalism is a system of government in which the power is divided. Underline, divided. The power is divided. It means the power is shared between the central authority and various constituent units of the country. Various constituent units of the country that we can call it as federalism. What is federalism? Once again, I will discuss. Federalism is a system of government in which the power is divided or shared between a central authority and various constituent units of the units of the country. Central, you know that is central government, national government, that is the central authority and the constituent unit of the authority. What is constituent unit of the authority? Constituent units of the authority here means uh, you know that uh, there are state government, uh, then local government, that panchayat, the municipal government is local government. They, are, they also enjoy this power. The power is shared not only by the central government, it's a federal, federal government. So that the power will be distributed or power will be shared or power will be divided among the central government as well as various constituent units of the country, various constituent units of the even state government, the local government, the power is divided, not concentrated by a person. Suppose if a person is concentrating that power, he can't say federalism, instead of he can say monarchy. Instead, we can call it as monarchy. If a person is holding the power, when you study about the uh, French society, then you know that uh, monarchical form of government existed. In Russia, also monarchical form of government existed. Louis XVI ruled in France, uh, monarchical form of government, not all the time. When Russia, you know that, uh, that uh, Sir Nicholas II ruled. Sir Nicholas II, he was a ruler, Romanov dynasty. In the Romanov dynasty, Sir Nicholas II, he was a ruler. That is a not federal form of government. That is the best example. But you know that that is not federal form of government. The federal form of government, India is best example for federal form of government. Because the power is not uh, hold by a person. The power is divided. That is important. Power is divided between the central authority, between the central government or central authority, not only really central authority, not only really the central government and various constituent units of the uh, country and various constituent unit of the country. Various constituent units of the country, the power shared by the central government. Central government has power, at the same time state government have also equal power. At the same time we cannot neglect the power of the local government also. Local government I means that panchayat and municipality. Even panchayat and municipality's power also we cannot neglect. It means that it is a federal form of government. Federal form of government is best example in India. India is considered as a federal form of government. Even central government, state government and local government have independent powers. Have independent powers. That is what underlying the word independent powers. They have independent powers. Because state government have powers, central government have powers. At the same time, you cannot neglect the lower level of government. That is the local government, municipality or panchayat, we cannot neglect these, all these three aspects. That is why in our country there exists a federal form of government. What form of government is existing in 
India federal system of government or federal form of government. I hope that you understood about the meaning of the word federal or federalism, federal form of government. Federalism is a system of government in which the power is divided or shared between a central authority and various constituent units of the country. Various constituent units of the country here means even state, even panchayat, that is local. So these power will be shared. It so, means that the central government will hold all powers, we cannot say like that. The central government, we cannot say that the central government is holding all powers, we can't say that. It will be shared or power will be divided among these, among the different various constituent units of the country that is called federalism. I hope that the meaning of the word federalism. In examination, may ask three mark questions in 10th class, uh, continuously ask the question about what is federalism, what is the meaning of federalism, or define federalism. Such type of questions may ask, you can write that. Federalism is a system of government in which the power is divided between a central authority and various constituent units of the country. So that you can write that this answer. So the power is not the concentrated by a person. If the power is concentrated by a person, then we can call it as monarchy or monarchical form of government. But here in India, there exists a federal form of government or we can say that federalism that exists in our Indian society. Federalism that exists. Power is created between this state, central and local level. Next is the key features of federalism. Next, I am going to describe about the key features of federalism. Which are the key features? Of Next, examination may ask you, what are the key features of federalism? That time you can write it. First one is, two or more levels of government is there. In federalism, two or more levels of government is there. A federal form of society or a federal system, two or more form of levels of government is there. More levels of government. These levels of government we can call as tier. T I E R. Not the T Y R E. That is another tier. Here T I E R. Tiers. Tiers here means levels. We can say levels. First level, second level, third level. So three levels are there. So that these levels we can call it as tiers. T I E R. Uh, that is called tiers. So each tier or each level had its own jurisdiction. What is jurisdiction? Is its own powers and privileges. That is its own jurisdiction. Its own power. Its own power that we can call it its own jurisdiction. Each entire order, its own jurisdiction. Nobody can question the jurisdiction of the local government. Nobody can question the jurisdiction of the state government. Nobody, nobody can question the jurisdiction of the central government. It means that each entire of government having jurisdiction, each entire of government having enjoying jurisdiction. Each entire order, its own jurisdiction because the power is equally shared. The power is equally shared. So that system that we can call as federalism. In federalism, the power is equally shared. Nobody is superior, nobody is inferior. One level is not superior, one level is not inferior. That is why I say you that independent powers are enjoyed in these three levels. Three tiers, we can call it as three tiers. G I E R S. Three tiers or three levels. So that is the second key feature of a federalism. Each tier had its own jurisdiction and a specific matter of legislation, taxation, administration. So nobody can question the power of legislation, taxation, and administration. Suppose if the state government collected tax. For the proper running of the government there, central government there can't question the authority of the state government there. What is the authority of the state government there can't question by the central government. At the same time, central government there sometimes uh, impose tax for the betterment of our country's government or national level, level of government. There. 
that time state government uh, had no power to question the authority of collecting the taxes, totally taxes, even in administration and legislation also. Even in the legislation, administration, as well as the taxation, that we can't question the authorities. Because each, each level, each tier are independent powers. That independent powers enjoyed by these the three levels. Which are the these three levels we will discuss. So first key feature of the two or more levels of government is the federalism. There are two or more levels of government is there. In India, example, you know that the three tiers are existing in India. Then each tier are its own jurisdiction. And as well in a specific manner of legislation, taxation and administration. So these are nobody can question and these three tiers join together and to run the government in a proper and a better manner for the benefit or the welfare of the people. For the welfare of the people. Again, what was the main aim of the government? Why this government is established? What was the main of the aim of the government? The main aim of the government for the welfare of the people. Welfare of the people, that was the aim. The government should function for the betterment and protection of the people and welfare of the people. Welfare of the people includes protection for all the things. All the things we can call it as welfare. In a short, we can say welfare of the people. Welfare of the people. Government should act for the welfare of the people rather than any kind of uh, any kind, kind of nano uh, narrow uh, thinking or anything like that. They should work for the welfare of the people in the local level or state government or central government. They should act together for the welfare of the people rather than prejudice, rather than these kinds of things. So these, the, these, these three levels join together and work for the welfare of the people, then only the country will be developed. That is why our country practice this uh, which government uh, that is federal form of government. Which form of government? Uh, federal form of government. Uh. First key feature I already explained to you. There are two or more levels of government uh, that we can call as tiers of government. Next, uh, each tier has its own jurisdiction, its own power. Uh, and specific manner of legislation, taxation, and administration, their own jurisdiction is there. Each tier has its own jurisdiction in the markets of uh, specific manner of legislation, taxation, and even the administration or rules. Next, uh, next key feature I am going to explain that is the different levels of government uh, powers are equal. Even though different uh, powers of government is there. So you never think that uh, these levels of government have, uh, some, uh, have some inferiority power and uh, these kinds of superiority power. No, not like that. All are equal. All these powers are equal. The powers enjoyed by this, uh, all these uh, tiers uh, are equal. So we can say that uh, different levels of government uh, powers are equal. Different levels of government powers are equal. State government is not above the central government. Uh, Central government is not above the local government. Local government is not above the state government. It means that independent powers are there. Independent powers are enjoyed by enjoyed in India. That form of government that we can call it as federalism and federal form of government. But one thing you remember that whatever may be the reason, whatever may be the things, the all these state government there. State government, central government, and local government, they will be under the administration. That is important. Under, under the administration. Whoever may be, whoever the government, whoever the parties, whoever the government, that doesn't matter. They may be in the central government, they may be in the state government, they may be in the local government, but that doesn't matter. These, all these are under the constitution. That is important. We have a written constitution. As per the written constitution, each government will act according to the constitution. They will, they are not above the constitution. They are not above the constitution. The central government, suppose if central government says that we have, we are national level, we have more powers. State government, they will not enjoy any powers. A local government, oh, they are local. So if the central government says that 
we we are above the constitution whatever we will say that we will do what that our our weights become the law if a uh, government will say that uh, our weights become the law nobody can question the authority of the central government because we are above the constitution they can't say if they say like this uh, we can go to the supreme court the highest authority and say that uh, central government is not to go, uh, going going as per the constitution the central government is uh, not going for the welfare of the people central government is going not for the welfare of the people definitely we can go to the highest authority of the court and say that uh, that welfare of the people is uh, now uh, harming uh, harms this uh, this central government harms the or state government harms the or local government harms the welfare of the people they were uh, above the they, were, they act above the they act uh, above the constitution that is against uh, our federal form of government that is against our federal form of government federalism says that uh, they know they be some even though they may be central government uh, or state government uh, or local government uh, they are not above the constitution they are under the constitution even though they have federal form of government uh, they are under the constitution they will rule according to the constitution they were not against uh, or they were not above the constitution they can't say that uh, we are we are ruling we are central government or we are state government we have independent powers we are attaining vast powers and then people they want to question the authority of the people we are above the constitution they can't say suppose if they say they are against the constitution they are against the constitution if such a thing happens that means uh, the court can interfere several markets if you take the example of india several states uh, they they, uh, they were against the welfare of the people that the court interfered many court the high court they interfered even the supreme court interfered when the government is against the wishes of the people welfare of the people that time the higher authorities that is the court they can involved and they can question the state government if state government they are according to their will and wish if they rule they will not think about the welfare of the people definitely the high court can question the state government why we you, you why you are ruling in this way they can question the authority you know they can give warning also kerala got several times warning from high court by the misrule by misrule of this misrule i means that they rule above the not only kerala but many states and state government they misrule misrule because they act against the constitution they think that they were above the constitution because they have majority power they think like that at last at that time high court and supreme court they interfere they suffered and they gave warning also several times uh, kerala also got warning uh, state government got warning from high court that uh, you are against the uh, against the constitution you are ruling this ruling so that uh, it is going on this rule so that they can warn so that uh, the government will rethink the uh, government will get a chance to rethink uh, they can that is the that is in a democracy or democratic form of government in a federalist form in a federal form of government the government can rethink it suppose their decisions their policies they were, that was against the constitution and that was against the welfare of the people definitely that a what can do the court can want them if the court want them they can rethink our decisions are wrong our policies are wrong so that we can abolish the decisions or revise that decision that time they can think it so they will get in a democratic form of government a federal form of government they will get the best opportunity to change their policies even they can change the policies in kerala if you take best example kerala several times many policies they implemented they changed it they revised the policies and make it a welfare of the people sir why because i told several times what sense of that they change their policies and they act for the welfare of the people sir and they understood that over the government are uh, as per the constitution not above the constitution as per the constitution they are ruled as per the constitution not above the constitution no government is under even central government or state government or local government they are not against the not above the above the constitution they will be ruled as per the constitution according to the constitution i hope that you understood about the different levels of government powers are there uh, next is disputes solved in the highest court so in a democratic form of government uh, the uh, in a federal form of government uh, dis- disputes may occur we can't say that uh, federal form of government uh, or democratic federal india is a sovereign socialist 
secular democratic form of government. You know it very well. So in this form of government, you can you can't say that in this form of best form of government, that is democratic form of government. Our government, the biggest democratic form of government. No quarrels, no fight, no kinds of disputes that happen in our society. Definitely disputes may happen. Definitely quarrels may happen. Definitely fight may happen because the, the, the different forms of government are ruling, different different parties are ruling our country. So disputes may occur. So disparities may occur. But but that will be solved by court. That will be disputes that will be solved in the highest court. Highest court that that can they can interfere. They can interfere and solve the problems, solve the quarrels. You know that India more than 130 crores of people are there. 130 crores, each individual having their own opinion. Each individual having their own opinions. One person's opinion may be uh, another person's uh, opposition of that opinion. One person's opinion may be harmful to the another person's opinion. So 130 crores of people are in 130 views, aspirations, will, wishes, taste, style, living conditions, their view, their ideas may be different. One person idea is different. So there will be individual difference that may happen in countries like uh, countries like uh, democratic countries like India. You know it will be. But these disputes, these quarrels are good for the society. These, uh, these quarrels or these uh, fightings uh, that can be disputed and best will be taken in the uh, taken in the democratic form of government. So disputes normally will happen, sir. That will be sold in the highest court. The highest court can then how the court can uh, ensure equality or justice because these courts are running as per the constitution. They look after the constitution. We are not familiar about the constitution, but those who are in the court, uh, the lawyers, uh, these uh, judges, they know this uh, administration, they rule this uh, um, uh, this uh, administrative books, they rule in the constitution. They rule the constitution, they rule according to the constitution, they read the constitution, they know it very well than the common man so that uh, they can give, they can solve the problems related to the disputes and uh, disputes that happened in our government. Disputes should be solved in the highest court, the highest court that disputes or quarrel will be solved. Next step, uh, there are three three tires, there are three types of government. Uh, the we will discuss one is union government, state government, and panchayat or municipal government. Next, we are discussing about the three tiers of government, three levels. Tier here means T I E R, not T Y R. The tier is different from this tier. Here, T I E R means levels. Uh, in examination, some children they may write instead of T I E R, they may write T Y R. That is different, that is B. Here, tier means uh, levels. Three levels of government. Meaning will change. You know, even though uh, there is small mistakes, uh, the meaning totally will change. So that uh, you remember that uh, spelling of tire is T I E R rather than T Y R. T I R there means T Y R tire, it means beams. Uh, Here tire means levels. Three levels of them. Which are the three levels? Uh, union government, that is national Union government at the national level. Union government or central government at the national level. You know that the central government is the central government at the national level. Next is state government. State government, each state have having their own government. That is state government. Kerala has, has its own government called the Kerala government. Like that, each state is having its own government. Next to the third, the lowest level, but we cannot say that the lower level, we can say like that, but we cannot say that the lower level having no power. Lower, lower level having also enjoying power. That is the system of federalism. We can't say that upper level, second level, third level. Okay, we can say like that, but we can't say that there is a lower level, there is no power in it. We can't say. Because each levels or tides have independent powers, having independent, they enjoy the independent powers. First, they move in the most central government. Central government is that it comes the national, that is at the national level. Next is state, you know, Kerala government, example. At the local level, local level, otherwise you can call us Panjayat, municipality, all these are under the category of local level. Local level also has the powers. If, suppose if we buy here at local level, we may think that local level, no power, no. Local power, local level also enjoy powers. Even in Panjayat, municipalities 
also enjoys a pervades. So these three types of government that are running our country, that are maintaining our country, these are three types of the three levels are the next we want to study about the objectives of federalism. What are the objectives of federalism? First one is that it is safeguard and promote the unity of the country. It is safeguard, safeguard and protect the unity of the country. Federalism, federalist form of government, their aim was to make a unity among our countries. Each state government having its own, its own powers and privileges. They have their own traditions, their own culture, their own belief, their own festivals. Each state has their own festivals, their own traditions, their own uh, living condition, their own language. Their own language, but these all these will be making under one. That was the aim of federalism. That was the aim of federalism. That was the objective of federalism. What was the objective of federalism? To safeguard and promote unity of the country. To safeguard and promote the unity of the country. To entertain or to encourage. The unity of the country. That was the objective of federalism. What was the objective of federalism? The so, objective of federalism is to safeguard and protect and promote the unity of the country. Unity of the country. What was the unity among us? We may, we will sometimes we may say that we are Kerala people. Tamil people they may say that we are Tamilans. Then Karnataka people they may say that we are the people of Karnataka. So Andhra Pradesh, they may say that we are the people of Andhra Pradesh. Andhra people, Kerala people, Tamil people, so we, 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 sometimes we may say, but we may say together we may say that we are Indians. We the people of India. We will say that eh, we are Indians or we the people of India. We will say that is the integrity, that is called the integrity. That integrity is nothing but unity. That unity always exists in each and every every individual as well as each and every every levels each level sir they think that we are a part of india suppose if uh, state government never think that we are independent government we have independent constitution we are free from central government state government never think that. Local government, we are, we are Panjaya municipal case, we have separate constitution, we are independent and we have our own uh, belief and traditions etc. So we are not a part of India. They never think like that. Like that they never think that. They have, they, they have integrity, they have unity. What is that unity? We are part and parcel of India. We are a part of India. We are uh, not separated, we are part of India, we have the feeling of unity, that is nothing but the nationalism. That feeling we can call it as nationalism or nationality or nationalism. That nationalism we can call it as patriotism. This nationalism is nothing but the patriotism. What is patriotism? Love for the country. Each and every individual in India, they should have patriotism. What is patriotism? Love for the country. Even, even though we are from Kerala, we will love Tamil people. We will love Andhra people because they are also parts of India. We are all in one country. We are part of India. We the people of India. That feeling we have. That nationalism we have. We have that patriotism. We have that patriotism. That is important. That should be emerged among in calculate. That will be emerged, that will rise up among each and every individual. Each and every individual, their motive should be to integrate, to unite our country. Division will not be uh, it will not be injected on the minds of the people. Division, being an Indian, I have the responsibility to protect uh, the protect our country. I have the I have I, I have to be proud to be an Indian. I should be proud to be an Indian. Being proud to be an Indian. Rather than oh I born in this country, what uh, poverty conditions never say. Instead of love our country, not only one individual, all these sections also, these styles also, uh, they think that uh, we should have that unity or integrity. We have to protect and preserve the integrity or unity of our country. That is something nationalism so that people should have patriotic values. 
object you must want safeguard and promote the unity of the country to safeguard and promote the unity of the country that was the main objective of federalism what was the main objective of federalism to safeguard and promote the unity of the country second thing objective that is accommodate regional diversity accommodate regional diversity we have to accommodate the regional diversity regional diversity each state having its own culture its own traditions its own language its own taste of living its own lifestyles its own uh, its own belief its own uh, festivals local festivals and all all other things are these are called the cultures diversities these we call as diversities these diversity even though uh, that is why pandit jawaharlal nehru called india as the land of unity in diversity land of unity in diversity unity which feeling be the people of india that unity each and every state people they never say that we the people of this part we are united no we are a part of india that unity we have when that what is diversity even though we have different languages even though we have different taste even though we have traditions we have different belief but we these traditions belief all these are called diversities these diversity should be protected these diversity should be protected these diversity should be encouraged people have different opinions people have different belief people have different taste people have their different lifestyle people have their, their own views whatever may be whatever may be the diversity is but we have to protect their diversity protect that is called accommodate we have to accommodate the regional diversity of it that was the objective of key objective so that was the objective of the lesson first objective once again safeguard and promote the unity of the country that was the first objective second of the objective accommodate the regional diversity what is that accommodate the regional diversity next step federalism always focus on mutual interest federalism always focus on focus on mutual understanding and mutual interest federalism always focus on mutual interest and agreement to live together and agreement to live together there will be a mutual understanding mutual agreement to live together in our country so uh, suppose if you take the example of india 130 crores of people they have their own views their own belief their own culture their own traditions their own festivals their own uh, dress so dress their own dress whatever may be but we have the one integrity that integrity we can call it as nationalism nationalism that meaning we can call it as patriotism love for our country that should be encouraged that will be inculcated in each and every individual not only the individuals but also understand that but also these levels and even the federal form of government always the importance and accommodate the regional diversity is the regional diversity should be accommodated in the federalism next we want to study about the federalism that is the third the third objective of federalism the third object of federalism that is mutual trust mutual trust there should be a mutual trust among these all these state government as well as central government as well as this local government they should be having a mutual trust and belief think that they will be act for the welfare of the people rather than any harm to any harm to things are as part of the society federalism and mutual trust and agreement to live together and they should have be a agreement they should have an agreement to live together they should have an agreement to live together they must have an agreement to live together that is these are all the objectives of federalism first we discuss about the features next we discuss about the objective next we discuss about the objective okay the focus is next we are studying about the uh, list about the federalism federalism we can divide into three list which are the three list in the federalism first one is union list second one is state list and third one is concurrent list which are the three list in federalism which are the three list in federalism first one is union list second one state list third one concurrent list first of all we want to study the union list union list that is such the national importance that is giving importance to national importance 
union list, state list, and concurrent list. Once again, union list, state list, and concurrent list. Union list. This union list give importance importance to the our nations. It means national importance. What are the aspects are in our nationality or national importance that will be given importance by this list? Which is list? Union list. Union list is giving importance to nationalist list or national importance. National importance was focused by this union list. Union list focused on what? National importance. They focused on national importance. Union list. Focus on national importance. Never forget. Union list focus on national importance. Now, what are national importance? What are the national importance of India? Like a defense. Defense is given importance to national importance. You know that without defense, we cannot grow our country. Why? Because neighboring countries may attack our country. In order to make the neighboring countries fear. We should have a proper defense system, defense mechanism, and defense system. Then only our country can go in a fearless way. In a fearless, otherwise we have fear. The neighboring countries will attack our country or not because we don't have proper uh, good weapons. If we have uh, good weapons, uh, if we have more power, we have more weapons, uh, and we don't want to fear the neighboring countries. So that uh, defense should make it more strong. To make defense more stronger, that was the that was the main aim of our country. Not only that one country, almost all the countries they give importance to defense, except one or two countries. Costa Rica, you know, you have you learned that Costa Rica in North America, the Costa Rica they are not giving importance to defense. Defense, they are not spending money for even one rupee also, so one penny also, or one rupee also, they do not spend for defense system or defense. But in our country, spend our most of our income is spent for defense of our country because our neighboring countries are always ready to attack our country in order to protect from our country, in order to resist them. We have strong weapons. If we have strong weapons and if we have strong defense mechanism, then only we can resist the neighboring countries. So that gives importance to national importance. That is national importance. Or our being a citizen of India, we have that feeling of nationality and we have defense mechanism and a defense system. We have strong weapons. We have to maintain strong weapons so that the neighboring countries will not attack. Otherwise, what will happen, sir? The neighboring countries may attack. Moreover, we have always we fear that we fear that they may attack us. So that we should have national importance. First one is defense. That is defense. Next foreign affairs. Next one that is very important. So foreign affairs. Each and you know that from not only in our country, almost all the countries they we have foreign affairs system. We have a good relations with many neighboring countries and foreign affairs ministers also there. And then moreover, we send ambassadors to many countries to make good relations with our countries. Even India also sent many countries from other other countries also sent. Uh, other countries also send ambassadors to our country to maintain good relations uh, with the countries. So that is important. That is all the countries also give uh, importance. Next to banking. Banking also, you know that banking is an unavoidable, unavoidable that uh, area we can call it as bank. Without uh, banking, we cannot live because of because, because our country also depends on banking sector. Banking is very essential. To provide loans, to uh, uh, to invest money as well as to provide loan, so it's very necessary. What is necessary in banking sector? That will be important. So national important. That is national important. That will be first defence. Second is bank. Third one about communication. The communication here I mean communication here I mean is that we know that different communications we are using. You know that 
there are different uh, communication methods are there, even the uh, even the social media are there, even the television is there, even radio, television, all other media, and moreover we have uh, um, we have other kinds of communicative systems and media and so So these are all very essential. So these are all very national importance, so national importance that is um, come under the category of unilingual. That comes under the category of unilingual. What are the categories that come under national list? National list come under the category of the giving importance to national national importance. National importance. First one defense. Next foreign affairs. Next banking. Then communication. Next is the currency. Currency also national importance. So you know that we have in India, even though we more than hundred and thirty crores of people are living, more than hundred and thirty crores of people are living. We have only one currency. So that is the unitary currency. That we can call the unitary currency. Monetary powers, the Reserve Bank has the exclusive right of printing notes. Who has the exclusive right of printing notes? Reserve Bank of India has the exclusive right to print the notes. Minted by the government and printed by Reserve Bank of India. That the boy, that the. Printed currencies that will be under the under the sir Reserve Bank of India, Reserve Bank of India, and at uh, 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 the national level, at the at the national level. So the currency also we consider equal uh, importance, national importance, giving importance, national giving importance, national importance. Once again, we want to list out the. Uh, union list. Let's start the once again. I want to list out the union list. All of you listen very carefully. Union list gives importance to uh, mainly the focus on national importance. Union list mainly focus on national importance. What are the things? Which are the sectors that are there under national importance? Defence, foreign affairs. banking communication and currency these are all giving importance to national national so this comes under union this this comes under which list union this i hope that you understood that the three list first one is union list and which are the areas these are the areas next is state list next we are discussing about the third list and the among this three is the second one is the uh, state state list the importance of state police you know that kerala there will be state police called the kerala police you know it kerala police mean that it is not only kerala police each and every state has their own police system why we are maintaining police to safeguard the interest and protect the people to protect the people to safeguard the people police is necessary otherwise what will happen sir weak sections of the people will be exploited by rich sections of the people or those who are having high influence people or those who are having more power now they may they may uh, exploit the poor people or the weaker section weaker sections of the people should be protected by our government uh, government can protect the weaker sections of the people through police suppose if you if you don't have much money and you are you are uh, you are exploited by your neighbor that can be you to go and fight with them you can't fight with them because you are weaker that person is more influential in the society more power is there that time you can go to police station and complain about this injustice you can complain it against this injustice so that you will get justice from the police station but uh, things are some uh, some issues that happen even though in the police even though i am discussing about the uh, police to protect the uh, people as yes, that is definitely they are acting for the protection of the peoples uh, to maintain law uh, law and order in our country that is no doubt at all uh, but there are some uh, rare cases that shows that uh, that create fear among the peoples to face police that is uh, and that i can say that that is a true thought there are some uh, some uh, we can say some incident not all incident uh, some uh, rare incident i can i can say that some rare incident uh, that makes the people uh, free 
is in the vehicle to keep away from the police station. Even though they uh, they they are, they are in this uh, injustice manner or they report injustice from others, uh, they won't approach the police station. Main reason is that uh, they don't fear maybe due to due to uh, rare incidents that happen, rare issues that happen in our society. So that so for in order to avoid that uh, situation, now police uh, they are making. friendly relations with the people uh, that uh, many police stations that uh, generally police stations that has been established in many parts of uh, the states here in kerala also you have seen that uh, uh, generally police in order to avoid the gap between the police and the people they established many generally police stations uh, this generally police state was to make friendly relations with the people people uh, people can at any time they can approach the police station without fear and they can complain uh, so that they will be ready to give justice to the people that is why some model police station some generally police station that will be established in uh, different parts of the states so whatever may be they will be come on the state list whatever may be the they will be come on the state list first we discuss about the state police second trade trade also under the control of the state you know that everybody can be in trade with the consent of the government with the consent of the government anybody can be in trade you can also be in trade with the consent of the government government approval is necessary again what why government will give approval if you want to establish a trade center definitely you have certain things must be uh, very essential because that is for your safety for your safety first thing is safety message like uh, fire extinguisher and other message should be established uh, in that uh, office or building or schools or whoever may be your trade center or maybe fire extinguisher is very necessary so why because all of a sudden in your classroom all of a sudden that fire occurred or uh, due to electric uh, electricity some frictions happens all of a sudden that fire that occur that time what do we do so that time fire extinguisher is necessary if we keep water in this again uh, we apply water uh, to this electricity you know the situation become worse you know that electricity will pass and people may die so that uh, the schools if schools will run definitely fire extinguisher is necessary fire fire safety is very necessary fire safety should be established so that the government will give approval to the school if school will be giving examples to school why i am giving examples because you are familiar with the school that is that is why i am uh, i am discussing about school so every institution every trade center whoever may whatever may be trade center whatever may be first thing is safety measure from that safety certificate should be issued that what we want to establish in many fire extinguishers safety measures should be established so that we will get the first get the approval from that is related to state second second thing is that that there will be adequate facility should be provided whether that if a school should be there school toilet facility should be in a proper and better manner many schools in india many schools in kerala you know that no proper facilities uh, there is a toilet facilities are there poor children they, they are they are feeling very difficulty so that it is very necessary to establish necessary facilities like toilet and other things that is also come under this state list so that the government how government will have to give approval first safety measure second facility is proper facilities then proper facilities then the libraries lab that should be a well equipped lab lab all these facilities government has given uh, a list of materials should be the put forward in this uh, lab that should be uh, that should be in the lab so that the government can be given approval second uh, next thing is that government uh, want a uh, proper uh, ground and other things children will be given on the plate so that they will measure the ground so that the proper ground should be established and they can be given approval otherwise uh, how this children will be accommodated in a school the children want to play so that uh, they, there should be a proper ground uh, so that the government will be given approval so that not only this Uh, other than this, uh, best facilities and, and the teachers, all the even the principal teachers, all these uh, facilities should be provided to the children. Whatever the facilities needed for the children.
that that should be established that is some the then only approval get it will get it i am giving you example of the school but actually i want to give a example of trader but you do not understand about that is a trader that is why i give same like this trade also need these types of approval from the government so so many things they have to satisfy then only government will really give approval to the trade so trade also come under state district trade also come under state district even commerce sir also come under state list this all this are in the state list the state list has all these things it are only sir state codes trade commerce then agriculture and irrigation these are all sir these are all sir and in the state state can under state police trade commerce agriculture proper irrigation that can be handled by the state so state how Last two points. It never means that state is above union list. State is not above union list. Union list is not above the state list. Understand? State is not above the union list. Union list is not above the state list. It means that independent powers. Each each union they have to independent powers, and they have to function it in a better. They have to mutual. That is why I told you that then there should be a mutual cooperation. And mutual trust among this union is the state is the concurrent list. They have to have equal powers and privileges. They have equal kinds of powers. No, 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 no. nobody is above or nobody is below. Or nobody is superior or nobody is inferior. Even the union is the house. Now giving importance to national powers. Then they are different sir. Foreign affairs, banking, communication. Uh, currency, even software also national level, national level also where the computer software also comes under the command of national level, national level. Next step, state list, state police, trade, commerce, agriculture, irrigation. These are all comes under the state list. They have who handle this state, who handle this sir? Uh, the state police, trade, commerce, agriculture, and irrigation. Who handle this sir? state list and is that is the second list state list that handle state, state police trade commerce agriculture and irrigation next the third list i going to explain the third list that is the concurrent list third list is called the concurrent list which is the third list third list we can call it as concurrent list once again i want to um, explain uh, there are three list in the parallel sir First one is union list. Union list is the key importance, national importance, and defense, foreign affairs, banking, communication, and currency are exactly the handling this union list. Union list handles these markets. Then next one is state list. State list handles state police, trade, commerce, agriculture, and irrigation. These are all handled by the state list. Next one is concurrent list. That is the third list. That is concurrent list. You know that concurrent list they give importance to common interest. Concurrent list they give importance to common interest. Common interest you know in the state as well as union. Common interest of the state as well as union. Concurrent list they give importance to common interest. Common interest especially in the state as well as union. Especially in the state as well as union. Therefore, concurrent list is given importance to common interest. Common interest you know. Interest of all these people, all these state officials, these union officials, this concurrent officials, this all these interest will be uh, protected. That is common interest. That is uh, including the state officials, including the state officials, including this state, that their interest should be protected in the concurrent list. Concurrent list includes which are the areas that include the concurrent list, which are the areas. That include the concurrent list. Concurrent list includes education, our sector, education, education. Then forest, then trade, marriage, adoption, adopting child also, adoption. Then succession. Next is succession. This all means includes this concurrent list. Once again, education, forest, trade, marriage. Adoption, succession, all these includes this uh, concurrent list. All these includes uh, concurrent list. Then it includes education, forest, 
ಸಪ್ರೇಟ್ ಹಾಗೆ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಕ್ಸೆಷನ್ ಹಾಗೆ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ಸ್ ದ ಕನ್ಕರೆಂಟ್ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ ದ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫೆಡರಲಿಸಮ್ ಫೆಡರಲಿಸಮ್ ಯು ನೋ ಇಟ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆಲ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫೆಡರಲಿಸಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೆಡರಲಿಸಮ್ ದೆನ್ ಒಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೆಡರಲಿಸಮ್ ದೆನ್ ಕೀ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೆಡರಲಿಸಮ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಫೆಡರಲಿಸಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಐ ಹೋಪ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆಲ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ರೀಡ್ ದ ಲೆಸನ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಪ್ರಿಪೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆಲ್ ಯು ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹಾವ್ ಎನಿ ಡೌಟ್ ರೆಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಮೀ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಐ ಹೋಪ್ ದಟ್ 